And I also spoke a short time ago with Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka. Take a look. And joining us right now, Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka. I know you had a very late night last night. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, it's good to be on, Esme, it's, and it's good to see the finish line. Right. I guess no government shutdown, right? Yeah, that's my promise from the very beginning. Uh, you know, the consequences were too great this time. Uh, just looking at the things that would happen that wouldn't happen before, you know, corrections not being funded, uh, vets' homes, uh, all, all of the different things that would have been a problem. And so everybody's working hard to get there. It has been very difficult. Um, we talked earlier in the show about what is in the police reform bill. What's not in the police reform bill, though, is any kind of change to traffic stops. If you talk to any black, especially man, in Minnesota, they all have the same story, no matter what their position in the community, that they have been stopped for what they say are a relatively meaningless situations. Don't we need to do something about that? You know, I think we'll do a hearing uh, in that next year uh, related to that issue. But I think when we found out that more than 900 guns had been confiscated in traffic stops like that, we said, well, let's let's at least explore it deeper. I think that's my commitment that we'll try to take a look at. Does it make sense? But trying to finish it here at the end, when some of the data clearly showed that uh, we're taking a lot of guns off the streets as a result of some of those stops. But I'm not I am committed to looking at that. And the other thing we did stop was anything that I said was anti-police. So, you know, change of the qualified immunity, which would have basically driven more police out of uh, policing. And things like that are not in the bill. And then the other big one is Matson Strong. That was the police officer that was uh, shot in the head and just and somehow survived. And making sure that if uh, a police officer shot, there's a bigger penalty. All right. Let me ask you about one of the things that you were keen on was tax relief for people who received unemployment and also uh, paycheck protection loans, small businesses. I, you got that done. It's 500,000 people got unemployment benefits and more than 200 Minnesota businesses got paycheck protection loans. Now they'll get a tax break. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we know that employers and employees struggled through the COVID shutdowns and we, it's the tax bill is a billion dollars of tax relief. So those are probably two of the biggest pieces in there, but just realizing that people went through a very difficult time uh, and the benefits that came from the federal government, the federal government didn't tax. And unfortunately, uh, the, the governor uh, in his, his department was gonna tax that unless we changed the law in Minnesota. Almost every state didn't tax it, but we had to fight in Minnesota to make sure it wasn't taxed. One of the things I heard Republicans talking about with pride was the $1.2 billion increase in, in what is going to be put into education over the next four years. Normally, you folks are the ones wanting to rein in that budget. Well, I think the issue was we focused it on the, the formula. That was the fairest way to get it out to every uh, school everywhere in the state. Uh, they wanted to focus it on a lot of little programs that seemed to direct most of it into Minneapolis, St. Paul. So. We felt like it was a win for schools across the state. It helps Minneapolis and St. Paul, but it helps all the other state, uh, all the other school districts across the state as well. So that was the focus of the win, that it was mostly on the formula to help people everywhere. Let's talk about the governor's, governor's emergency powers. You have been fighting that for months now, actually just about a year. He says he's gonna drop them August 1st. You say that's not good enough. You want July 1st. Yeah, well, I've been pushing the last few weeks in the negotiations that, that emergency powers are going to end and it's going to go on the state government bill. And so as he saw the state government bill come to the floor, he realized uh, that we were serious. Uh, the day before he offered August 1st, I, I said, we're, Governor, we're moving forward to end them, just like uh, at least 16 states. I mean, more and more now are, are, are doing it, Democrat and Republican. It's, it's just time to end it. New York even ended it. And so it's like, I know it's hard to give up uh, emergency powers when you have all of that power, and he used it very, very broadly, but it's time for it to be over, and, and that's why it's on the bill. Well, it was a, an extraordinary crisis, and it does look like we are finally moving out of it. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka, thank you so much for your time this morning. That's good to be on your show. Absolutely. 
And I just want to say I misspoke in that interview. It is 200,000 Minnesota businesses who re received paycheck protection programs, uh, loans rather, not 200.